Hi there and welcome to today's book review. Today I'm talking about The Breakaway by Jennifer Weiner. If you're thinking about checking out The Breakaway yourself, you don't have to worry about spoilers in the first half of this video. The first part of my videos are always spoiler free so you can decide if this book is your cup of tea. After a quick summary and a basic review, I'll give my rating and then a clear spoiler warning before I go into a more detailed summary and a deep dive into my thoughts and opinions on the book. Before we get started, here are some content warnings for The Breakaway by Jennifer Weiner. The Breakaway is an ensemble story about a cast of characters making a bike trip from New York to Niagara Falls. Our main character, Abby Stern, is a plus-size woman who's struggling to find her place in the world. She's not sure what she wants to do for a career, navigating a less-than-perfect relationship with her mother, and trying to find love. Abby finds herself dancing with a handsome man at a bachelorette party out of town and decides to go home with him. She spends the night with Sebastian and then sneaks away the next morning, thinking she'll never see him again. Two years later, she's in a committed relationship with her childhood sweetheart, and he asks her to move in with him. She's feeling unsure about this answer, and to delay having to give him an answer, she takes on a last minute job as a bike tour leader. As they all gather up on the first day of the trip, Abby is shocked to see that her mother has joined, and not only has her mother joined, but Sebastian has reappeared. Sebastian and Abby's mother, combined with the interesting cast of characters, means nobody's going to arrive in Niagara Falls exactly as they were when they left. So before I give my rating, let's do a quick run through of my rating system. One star means that I could not finish the book. Two stars means I struggled to finish, but I did. Three stars means it was good, I liked it. Four means I really liked it and I would recommend it to a friend. And five Five stars, which is my highest honor, means I would read the book again. I gave The Breakaway a four star rating because I really liked it and I would recommend it to a friend, but I probably wouldn't read it again. If you read The Breakaway and you really enjoyed it, I have some suggestions for other books you may also enjoy. Weather Girl by Rachel Lynn Solomon has some plus size representation for the male love interest. Once More With Feeling also has some themes of cheating and a past relationship that's budding into a new relationship. And Business or Pleasure also by Rachel Lynn Solomon has the same structure of a one night stand at the beginning of the book and then a relationship developing following that. We are now entering the spoiler filled part of this video. If you think The Breakaway sounds like a book that you would like to read yourself, now is a great time to click away, go read it, and then come back when you're done so that you can see if you agree with my thoughts and opinions. If you like the sound of this book but you don't want to read it yourself, you don't have to worry because I will give you the full rundown. The book starts out with Abby Stern at a bachelor at party. We see her thinking about how she's struggling to find a career that she enjoys and also still struggling to maintain body positivity in her larger body. We learned that Abby had gotten used to being the largest girl in a group, but now she'd arrived at a point where she was both the largest and the least accomplished. This new development did not fill her heart with joy. While she's at the bachelorette party, they're going out to clubs and bars and she meets a handsome man. The two of them start dancing together and chatting and she ends up going home with him. They have a great time together, they're intimate, and he even makes her food and brings her pasta in bed. But when she wakes up the next morning, she sneaks away <laughs> and doesn't leave her name or phone number or anything so that he can contact her. She convinces herself that as a plus size woman, this man is more likely to look at her in the morning without the lights of the club and a nice dress and think that he made a mistake. Years later, Abby is in a committed relationship with her childhood sweetheart, Mark. The two of them met at fat camps when they were younger, and since then Matt has had a gastric bypass surgery, meaning he has to follow a very strict diet that doesn't always line up with what Abby wants to eat. He asks her to move in with him, and Abby can see the plan going forward and how it'll be her moving in with him, and then them getting married and potentially having kids. This makes her feel some hesitation, and to delay having to answer him, she accepts a job to be the leader for a bike tour that'll take roughly two weeks starting in New York and ending in Niagara Falls. She's nervous about being the leader for this group because as a plus size woman, she worries that people will not take her seriously and respect the experience that she has as a biker. This anxiety only grows when she realizes one of the bikers in her group is Sebastian himself, who clearly still has an interest in Abby. And Sebastian is not the only thing making her nervous as her mom shows up 
right at the end, adding on to the ensemble and adding on to Abby's stress. Abby's mom is the reason that she went to fat camp when she was a kid, and the two of them have struggled to connect through her mother's fat phobia and obsession with diet culture. On the second day of the trip, a TikTok goes viral, and it's a woman talking about how she and most of her friends realize that they have all been with Sebastian. This starts to spread with more and more women commenting about how they have also been with Sebastian and how he really manages to get around. Sebastian worries about this and doesn't want Abby to see it because he doesn't want it to make her see him negatively. Abby, of course, does find out about it. And though the two of them had started to grow a little bit closer, Sebastian's newfound internet fame does make them have a bit of a fight during one of the group dinners. Sebastian is pointing out that Mark and Abby don't really have a lot in common and that it seems like their relationship would be kind of boring, while Abby is pointing out that he's never actually managed to have a serious relationship and instead only has flings. In the middle of this strife between our two love interests, we have a teen girl named Morgan in the group who is using the bike ride as a way to get an abortion. She's from Ohio where she cannot get an abortion without the consent of one of her parents or guardians, so on the bike ride she plans to veer off and go to an abortion clinic, get the procedure, and then try and continue on with the bike ride as though everything's fine. Her dad is a pastor and her mom has been known to agree with pro-life sentiments, so Morgan's really nervous and worried that if her parents did know about her pregnancy, they would not let her terminate it. She enlists the help of Andrew, another teen boy who's also in the bike group. When she asks him for help and asks him to come with her to the clinic and, and swears him to secrecy, Andrew goes to his own mom and explains the situation in hypothetical terms like, I have this friend who maybe needs an abortion and she asked me to help her in secret and Kayla figures out pretty quickly who this teenage girl friend is and decides that she's also going to try and help Morgan even though it seems scary and it feels like if her parents found out about it they might be able to take legal action against her and her son. Kayla loops Abby into the plan and all of them come up with a strategy to help Morgan get to the clinic and back without her mom finding out. It's pouring down rain on this day and so the plan is that the van following the group will take them in shifts and so the first shift is going to take Morgan's mom and Abby's mom who entices her with a spa trip. And then the second group is going to stay back because Kayla says she's planning on taking Andrew to look at the local university, but she's actually gonna be taking Morgan to get her abortion. Abby isn't able to help directly with this plan because Sebastian decides he's gonna be riding even though it's pouring down rain. And as the tour guide, Abby is required to ride if anybody wants to. So the two of them go out in the rain, Abby following behind Sebastian, who doesn't wanna be anywhere near her because of their recent fight. And of course, Sebastian and up crashing and bloodies his knees and Abby needs to patch him up, which ends up with the two of them kissing in the rain. Morgan, having gotten the pills that she needs to induce her abortion, hides out in the hotel gym the next morning because she has pills that she needs to let melt in her mouth for at least 30 minutes. Andrew hides with her and when her mom realizes she can't find her, she starts to freak out and even goes so far as calling the cops because she's convinced her daughter is missing. While this is going on, Morgan's mom starts to get a few inklings that other people know about something that she doesn't and it only worries her further. When Morgan finally does come out of hiding after taking her abortion pills, she goes up to her hotel room with her mom who demands to know what's going on. Morgan gives up and tells her mom what has happened and that she went to the clinic and got the abortion pills and her mom reveals that she actually also had an abortion when she was 18. This is really surprising to Morgan who has always heard her pastor dad and mom sharing pro-life sentiments and saying that getting an abortion is murder, period. They agree agree to keep this information to themselves, not to tell Morgan's dad, and Morgan's mom is there to help her through the cramps that she experiences after taking the medication. Sebastian and Abby continue to get closer after this and even spend a couple of nights together while on the trip. To everyone's surprise, Mark, who is still currently Abby's boyfriend, is waiting for them outside of their next accommodation when they roll up. Because of Sebastian's internet fame, a picture of him and Abby looking somewhat chummy circulates on the web and Mark ends up seeing it and so he comes out to confront Abby. The two of them go inside into a private room to talk about it and Abby admits that she's been cheating on Mark. Mark tells her that he loves her and that he can work through it and they can still be together, but Abby says that she thinks it's just a better idea if they be done. Abby surprises everyone by leaving the next morning without saying goodbye and from some conversations that she and Sebastian have together, she realizes she wants to start a club for girls so that they can ride bikes, experience freedom, and potentially get the same kind of help that Morgan needed. During this time, Abby 
Abby also has a conversation with her mother Eileen and Eileen reveals that she was fat when she was a teenager. The two of them have a conversation about it and Abby learns that her mother tried everything all of the diets and all the exercises and still could not manage to lose the weight. And so she ended up getting a gastric bypass surgery, which is why to some extent she follows such an extreme diet. This of course is surprising to Abby, but she also communicates with her mom that that doesn't make it okay and that sending your kid to fat camp is still not a great solution for not wanting her to get bullied or ridiculed the way that Abby's mom was when she was a kid. Even though the encounter is kind of rocky and doesn't really resolve much, it does seem that the two of them are headed on a path to a better relationship. At the end of the novel, Sebastian returns after having a year to work on himself and the two of them get the happy ending that they deserve. All right, so now that you know what happens in The Breakaway, let's go ahead and do a deep dive into my thoughts and opinions on this book. I always like to start with what I liked about a book first. And so the first thing I thought was really great about The Breakaway was the very strong thematic element. I felt that the focus on reproductive rights, fat phobia, especially towards women, mother-daughter relationships, and diet culture really combined to make a nice feminist theme throughout the book. The Bicycle has long been seen as a proponent of the feminist movement, giving women the freedom to go where they wanted to, when they wanted to, and to be able to gather in groups. And in this novel, we see women using the bicycle as a way to gain autonomy and make their own choices. Obviously, we see Abby discovering her purpose. We see Morgan getting the help she needs to make decisions about her own body. We see Abby's mother looking to reconnect with her daughter and we see Morgan and her mom using the bike trip as a way to deepen their relationship. The mother-daughter relationships are prominent in this book and we watch as Abby and her mom struggle through the fat phobia and diet culture and Morgan and her mother struggle through concepts of autonomy and her mom's pro-life ideology. Abby's perception of the world and also how other people perceive her is heavily influenced by her experience as a plus-size woman. We see her doubt her self-worth and that can affect her relationships with other people especially her potential romantic partners like Sebastian and Mark. Despite being an avid biker and very experienced in bicycling, she still worries that the members of her group won't respect her as a tour guide because she's a bigger woman. Another thing I really liked about this book was Sebastian and Abby's connection. I felt that there was a lot of spark and intensity there and I thought that the intimate scenes were very well done and did not become cringy. For the most part, I liked their romance and their interactions on the bike trip, although there were times that I felt it became a little awkward, but that was mostly towards the end. There are a few things that kept this book from being a five-star read for me. The first is how the pacing changed pretty drastically near the end of the book. During the bike trip, we have a very fast pace with things happening almost every single day or skipping through the times when nothing is happening. I understood that both of the characters needed some time to become more developed before they were ready for a relationship with one another, but the ending did just feel a little underdeveloped with Sebastian appearing at the end and everything being great. I also wanted to see the book explore Sebastian and his sexual life a little bit more. It came really close to exploring how society views men and women differently when it comes to being promiscuous, but it just didn't quite get there. Having your personal life blown up for the internet the way that Sebastian experienced in this book would be a very traumatic and intense experience. Sebastian insists several times that he didn't do anything wrong and that he clearly communicated with every woman he was with that he just intended to have some fun. I don't think that there's a clear black and white here, and I think that things can get really messy really quick, but I would have liked to see the book explore this idea a little bit more because on some level it felt like some of the characters, if not the book itself, felt that Sebastian was getting what he deserved by having this information spread publicly, but I, I just wanted to see more of that and see how different characters felt and how Sebastian himself could struggle with how society perceived him once his intimate personal life became public. All in all, I really enjoyed The Breakaway. I thought it was a great book with an interesting premise and great characters. I loved the plus size representation, the compelling relationships, and the feminist theme. If you're thinking about picking up a copy of The Breakaway or any of the other books I recommend in this video, consider checking out some of the links in my description. As always, you can add me on Goodreads or subscribe here to see more about what I'm reading next. Thanks for watching.